Adrian Crawford. I'm Julia. Okay. And our discipline was Craig Pagonti, Positive Teacher Leverage and Realistic Student Accountability to Establish Classroom Discipline. Um, a little background on Craig Pagonti. He began teaching in 1990. He taught middle school and high school English and English as a second language at a LA Unified School District for 20 years. He also worked with juvenile offenders in LA at probation camps. And his style is very strict. He's a disciplinarian that is reality-based and not theory-based. Um, just a few things I'm gonna go over real quick is his key attitudes and skills are teacher attitudes, students' accountability, leverage for obtaining compliance and management tactics. So for teacher attitudes, he thinks that any disruption in the classroom is a major interference and that students should be focused at all times. He thinks that the teachers and students are not equal. The teacher is the authority in the classroom and students are there to learn and listen and be quiet. Um, the classroom is for academic learning only and he believes that self-esteem comes from hard work and knowledge learned. And his idea of how to operate this in the classroom deals with actions, warnings, rewards, and speaking. For actions, he says that they speak much louder than words, so how you enforce your rules in the classroom are going to make a big difference. Um, he says when you make your rules, you need to strictly enforce them, follow them, and make sure that the students understand them. The ideas of giving students warnings in the classroom, he sees them as self-defeat. When you're giving a student a warning, you're just pretty much ignoring the rules that you've set and are get, like letting them get away with that. And he says it's also a waste of time. You're taking away time for learning in the classroom. For rewards, he sees them as bribes, bribes to get your students to learn. His quote is, good education is pri priceless. And he usually, he does follow some rewards, but they're to a very minimum. He'll have activities in class to celebrate learning that'll go along with what they're working on in the classroom. Speaking wise, he says, do not leave open-ended questions where there's room for argument because students will kind of talk back to you at times. One of the examples that I took out of the book was Instead of saying, stop talking, John, use, there's no talking in my class, John. Stay after school for 15 minutes for detention. <laughs> so these are a few of the rules that he thinks need to be in, listed into the classroom. Um, when students first enter the classroom, they need to be quiet and go right to their assigned seat. He thinks they need to sit at a 90 degree angle with your feet flat on the floor and your spine straight. Rule two, show respect at all times toward the staff. He says that students can do this through their facial expressions, body language, and also tone of voice towards authority. Some other ideas for rules that he uses are how to work on tasks. He says when the bell rings, you start working, you be productive, respectful, and timely in the way that you work and manage your classroom. Distractions, he said that they should remain invisible and silent. He doesn't want students chewing gum, tapping their pencil, or eating during class. His idea for the beginning of the period kind of goes with walking in, being in your class seat, and following the rules as soon as you go <coughs> to the classroom. Um, some rules that he would take into place for miscellaneous behavior would be like if a student interrupts during class, calls out to other students, if they leave their seats or start playing with scrap paper, he would see that as a distraction and enforce a rule upon that. For permissions and procedures, such as like bathroom passes, he says like they need to ask permission for those kinds of things, don't just leave the classroom. Um, teacher requests and directions. If a student feels the direction is unreasonable, he thinks that they can go elsewhere and argue it with the principal or counselor. He doesn't want to waste class time debating with students. At the end of class, he says students are accountable for their own area, cleaning it up and making sure it's ready for the next day of class. Um, leverage that ensures students comply with rules. Um, you must have some sort of leverage, so 
yet he tells us to be really strict, but then he tells us to have some leverage. So 15 minute detention, it's not enough to where it's going to ruin the whole student's day, but it's enough that's gonna say, hey, you need to remember that you need to behave in, in class. Um, it's, he says that it's a lever that can move boulders. So basically what he's saying is like I said, it's not going to uh, ruin their whole day, but it's going to remind them, hey, I need to behave. So here's my punishment for what I did wrong. Um, he also offers alternate for 15 minute detention, um, arrange for students to serve detention during school. So if they're a bus rider and their parents don't get off work until five o'clock, a 15 minute detention isn't gonna work for them after school. So do it at lunchtime or if, the whole, if it's a problem with the whole class, then make them copy the rules. Which if we've established the rules in the beginning, they should know the rules, and to me, that's kind of pointless. But um, organize the room arrangement. Have the desks in rows, not like this, so that you can like walk through and it looks neat and organized. Cultivate quiet. So the first couple of weeks of school or like <coughs> after breaks, make sure that you have it quiet and they know that there's no extra talking. You're not going to allow that and have resources handy so that when you are starting to do something, you have it right there and you don't have to wait, or the students don't have any downtime, so you're not like, oh, what did I do with that? Where did that go? And you don't know, and they're waiting for 15 minutes doing nothing or a meaningless task. And dress professionally. Make eye contact with your students. It goes back to the whole respect thing. If you're like dressed down, then your students aren't gonna respect you and if you don't respect your students then they're not going to respect you either because they don't think hey if you don't respect me why should I respect you and reinforce reinforce your authority um, give something back to your students so find out what they're interested in <coughs> do like an interest inventory at the beginning of the year and get them involved in something that they want to do but don't make it just a random activity that they're just going to have fun with and not learn from. Make it worthwhile. <coughs> Organize, um, have procedures for everything. Make sure like your lesson plans are well planned out and step by step and if they're not, know what you're going to be doing every step of the way because uh, if you get messed up somewhere, it's going to be hard for you to get back on track. And listen to your students um, we talked about empathetic listening. Listen to what they're saying because something that you may be doing isn't working for them and if it's not working for that student, how many other students is it not working for? You don't know that if you're not listening to them. And speak in statements. Don't say, um, is it time to work? Say, it's time to work. Understand? Um, educate your students. Um, recognize that it's your job to teach, not to counsel. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but that's irrelevant, I guess. And hold students <laughs> accountable for their behavior. Um, make them like the 15 minute detention. Make them do that or make them do a wor an extra worksheet or something so that they know that they're in trouble for their misbehavior. And prepare, know if this happens, you're gonna do this. Or if this happens, you're gonna do something else. Um, have a quiet, respectful, and focused classroom. You don't wanna have a class that's all the time noisy and not working and they never are on task. Keep them busy, don't have downtime for talking. So when they're in groups, if one group finishes early, make sure you have something else for them to do. Even if it's just read their AR book or a book that they're reading for fun or work on some other homework. Make sure there's something for them to do so that they're not talking and running all over the classroom. Um, review, review your rules periodically so that they don't forget them. Uh, Assess yourself, look at the things that you might be doing wrong or things that you might be doing right or what worked here but it's not working there. Um, 
take care of things, don't count on administrative or parental support. So that means you need to do it yourself. Don't count on don't count on somebody else to do it because chances are nobody's going to do it. And don't be manipulated. Respond to students. Don't argue, don't let them argue with you. Um, types of students to look for. Type A is the polite, prepared, ready for class. So they're going to come to class and they're going to do their work and they're not going to give you any problems. Type B is respectful, but sometimes they're kind of rowdy and they don't always do what you want. And type C is arrogant, disrespectful, and they could be rowdy sometimes too. So they're not going to want to do their work, they're going to be defiant, and it's going to be hard to deal with that kind of student. Okay. Um, uh, he suggests a thing that he likes to call doorway tactics. So um, Sagazi's going to suggest that you stand at the door and you stop every single student before they come in. Don't let anyone walk past you without stopping and talking to you. Um, so you're going to give handoffs. You're going to list expectations for the day. You're going to do all that stuff right there at the door so they know walking into the class what's expected. Um, also, he suggests he suggests repeating expectations three times before allowing students to enter. So you're going to say, uh, you need to start with the bell ringer. The bell ringer is the first thing you need to do. Do the bell ringer before you do anything else. Something like that. Um, three times before they even come into the classroom. Um, students who do not have their materials, he uh, does not let into the classroom. So he's saying, if you don't have your pencils, your papers, your books, you're gone. Don't come in here. <laughs> so um, then he's going to require students to repeat entry to the classroom if they are a disruption. So they come in and they're acting silly or they're talking or any of these things, he's going to ask them to go back out into the hallway and start over. Okay, so his other tactics, um, with assigning seats, um, do not allow students to question. Obviously, if they get put next to me, they don't want to be next to you, they're going to be like, I don't want to be Kathy to next He says, no, don't let them question. It's not an option. Um, he wants you to learn names, which is important, mm -hmm. and uh, he says it's going to make it a lot easier for classroom management if students know that you know them. Um, and then, like we talked about earlier, establishing leverage, um, ensure that they are uh, clear on all the rules. And finally, we're talking about excluding students. This is his big way of managing the classroom. If somebody's a disruption, they're gone. Um, so any defiance, repeated disruption, or gross dis disrespect are the only three things that should cause students to get sent from the room. Um, so defiance is any arguing with the teacher. So like the questioning of the assigned seats and all that, that would be defiance. Um, repeated disruption, so if a student's talking and he asks them to stop, the next step is going to be to explode them from the class. Um, gross disrespect, swearing or insulting another student or the teacher. Um, that's all we have on the PowerPoint, but we have a, it is this one. Oh, there's one more, never mind. <laughs> um, parents and administrators. Virgilia mentioned earlier that uh, he doesn't believe that you should rely on the parents or administration to uh, provide any support. Um, so he wants you to make your administrators aware of what you're doing so that they can give assistance to you when you exclude the students from the classroom. Um, and he suggests that principals are actually happy to see teachers using this method instead of having to take care of the discipline themselves. Um, and he does not believe parents are likely to be of much help at all with discipline issues. Um, but you can explain the rules to them and ask if they see anything wrong with it, and they're usually not going to see anything wrong with the rules. So that's uh, his stance on the parents administration help. So we have a couple of cases that we're going to ask you about. Um, I'll give you an example first and then give you what uh, Saganti says about them, and then we'll ask you 
what you think he would do in another situation. So the first case is Christina, a student in Mr. Jake's class, is quite docile. She socializes little with other students and never disrupts lessons. However, despite Mr. Jake's best efforts, Christina will not do her work. She rarely completes an assignment. She is simply there, putting forth no effort at all. How would Craig Saganti deal with Christina? And they say, Mr. Saganti provided the following commentary. Christina is required by the rules to be on task at all times. Therefore, she will be assigned a 15 minute detention if she does not stay on task. At the detention, I will try to determine the root of the problem. It is almost always that the work is too challenging, so in this case, I might help her with the work after school a bit and or contact her parents to see if they can help her at home. That is his response to case number one. So I'm gonna read case number two, and then you all can kind of provide feedback to what you think that he would do in this case. So case number two is Sarah will not stop talking. Sarah is a pleasant girl who participates in class activities and does, does most, though not all, of her assigned work. She cannot seem to refrain from talking to classmates, however. Her teacher, Mr. Gonzalez, speaks to her repeatedly during lessons, to the point that he often becomes exasperated and loses his temper. What suggestions would Craig Saganti give Mr. Gonzalez for dealing with Sarah? He would put her out the classroom and wouldn't even say thanks her, wouldn't give her the time of day to argue. Probably had a 15 minute time. You guys stated that if there's a disruption then they need to try the re-entry into the classroom method, so maybe you would suggest that to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's all we have for you then. That's awesome.